Hello marketing research students and SPSS users. In this tutorial, we're going to continue to use our Craft Beer 200 random subset data set. This time we're going to recode some values. Uh, we're going to do a series of basic recoding exercises that marketers often have to do for subsequent um, ease of analysis or interpretation of their data. Some of the basic tasks that we're going to do today, we're going to show how to reverse code a variable, counter sum up uh, a series of different variables or items and, and place them into a single variable, We'll learn about two box scoring. We'll learn how to take the average of a series of variables and place them into one variable. We'll create a dummy variable uh, from two or more variables. And we'll turn a single nominal variable with multiple categories into a series of dummy variables. OK, so first, reverse coding. Reverse coding uh, is whenever we have the values of a interval or ratio scaled um, variable in the order that we'd like to flip. So for example, and we're in variable view here, let's take a look at our subjective knowledge questions about craft beer. Our first question says, I know quite a bit about craft beer. And if we remember, these are scored in a Likert model. So five means they strongly agree to this question. So those who rate high, score, high numbers think they know a lot about craft beer. Next, I know how to judge the quality of a craft beer. Sure enough, a high score would indicate, again, they think they know a lot about that. Subjective knowledge. I know enough that it can, I can help recommend craft beer to other people. Again, high score corresponds to high knowledge. Among my circle of friends, I'd be considered to be one of the more knowledgeable about craft beer. Again, high score, high knowledge. Next question. I really don't understand much about craft beer. In this case, a high score actually indicates low subjective knowledge. A 1 or a low score would indicate that they believe they do have high subjective knowledge. Now it's perfectly fine and in fact many case necessary to ask reverse score, uh, reverse uh, style questions in a survey. But when it comes time to analyze the data, this can be confusing and sometimes troublesome. Let's see what I mean by that. I'm going to go to analyze and run a very quick correlation matrix. So analyze, correlate, bivariate. I'm going to grab our subjective knowledge questions and I'm going to get a correlation matrix of these five, uh, sorry, six questions. We would expect that that negatively scored question is in fact has a negative correlation with the other values. I'm going to do some quick editing so that this uh, table is easier for us to see. We'll cover some of this a little later in another video how to do this. Okay. So now we see our one, two, three, four, five, six questions. And the diagonal is a one. Cor questions are perfectly correlated with themselves. And we can see how well each question is correlated with each other question. And sure enough, here's our I really don't understand much about craft beer. And we see strong negative correlations. And that's what we'd expect to see. If people rate high on this, they'll rate low on other ones. And if they rate low on this, they should rate high on other questions. That's fine. Sometimes, though, we'd like to put these in more of a consistent ordering. In other words, we want to reverse score them. So if someone did score low on this in the, real, in the initial questionnaire, we'd like to flip it so that we can interpret it as high scores on this question mean they have high subjective knowledge. Here's how we can do that. We can go to transform and use the compute variable command. The compute variable command gives us, requires us to give a name to our new variable. In this case, I'm going to give it the silly name new variable. And then we type in our equation. What do we want the new variable to behave like compared to various mathematical operators, functions, and existing variables? In this case, if we use the reverse, the reverse scored question here, what we want to happen is if they were scored a 1, now they're scored a 5. If they're scored a 2, they're now scored a 4. Keep the 3s as the 3s. How we do this is quite easy. To do any sort of reverse scoring for a known for an interval scale question, we simply take the lowest possible score, which is a 1, add the highest possible score, which is a 5. I'm sure many of you would just put in 6 here, that's perfectly fine. And we certainly don't need the parentheses, but I like to organize it, it makes me happy. And we simply subtract the existing value, and this is saying look at the existing value in each row and subtract that value from it. So if someone scored a 5, we would take 6 minus 5, it'll leave a value of 1. Very good. 
Now, if we wanted to, we could hit paste and save our syntax for our new computed variable, or we just hit OK, and it'll run that syntax. And if we look way down here in our output file, we'll see we ran the syntax called compute new variable. That's the name we gave it. We gave it the name new variable equals one plus five minus subject knowledge period execute. So it ran it. And let's go to our data view set and see if it worked. And sure enough, we see uh, there's something called new variable with a pattern of ones, two, threes, fours, and fives. Any time where someone did not answer that question previously, SPSS didn't know what to do with those values, so it didn't return six minus zero and give us six. It said, I don't know how to subtract a value that doesn't exist. So it again returned an empty value. So that little period indicates missing data. So that's worked. That's the simple way that we record um, reverse, code, reverse code values inside SPSS.